Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome you all to worship here at First United Methodist Church. A special welcome to our guests this morning. We have many who are here with us this morning. Thank you for being with us. And for those who are worshiping on, online, thank you for welcoming us into your home or wherever you're gathered for worship this morning. We've done our first upgrades to the sound for our streaming service, so hopefully you'll be uh, hearing a big difference there. I'm Reverend John Nash. I'm joined in worship leadership this morning with Samantha, who is our lay reader. First Light is made up of Valerie, Nels, Camille, and Lee. In the sound booth, we have Philip, James, Peggy, and Linda, and Anne and Kim, our ushers. So thank you to them for their worship leadership this morning. We are continuing in our worship service, excuse me, on the gospel uh, according to Star Wars or in Star Wars. And we'll also have a baptism this morning. And we have um, the ladies from Paper for Water uh, back with us again this morning. So we have lots of things going on. So we hope that you have come with the expectation that we will encounter the risen Christ that the Holy Spirit will be moving and working amongst us here this morning, that we'll be transformed by gathering together as the body of Christ. So I'm going to invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Remain seated if that is more comfortable, as Samantha leads us in our opening prayer. Together, let us pray. O oh God of patient persistence, just as the Father waits at the gate for the return of the prodigal son, and the shepherdess searches for her lost sheep, so too do you never give up on us. Your faithfulness is greater than we can even imagine, and your love is deeper than we can ever know. We come this day to bring our praise. May we seek your strength and presence continually. May we know the ending grace. And may we ever be mindful that we are your beloved children, loved not for who we are or what we have done, but because of who we are. And who we are always so much more than the worst or the best thing we have ever done. For we are your people and you are our God, and we praise your holy name through the power of your spirit, and in your righteousness and name, your Son. Amen. For those in the sanctuary, as we sing, you are invited to come forward to light a candle of joy, hope, or concern, whatever it might be that you need to lift up to the Lord. Those worshiping online are also encouraged to light a candle where you are. You are invited to remain standing as you are comfortable, or be seated if that is more comfortable as we continue worshiping through song as we seek to go deeper and closer in relationship with God.
Do you feel closer? Yes, I hope so. Um, let's um, maybe reach our arms out and invite Jesus to come here, his spirit to be here with us um, and to help us to experience his amazing, amazing grace. Your grace is so amazing. Um, we may not fully comprehend it, but we know that you died and you rose so that we might live in love, might rise with you and experience peace and healing with you. And so as we sing this next song, um, remember your baptism and be thankful. Revelation, Christ. 
Christ Jesus crucified. Salvation through repentance at the cross on which he died. Now hear my absolution, forgiveness for my sin. sink beneath the waters that Christ was buried in. And you may be seated. And for those who are worshiping online, uh, get the sound working. And apparently our cameras are freaking out on us. So if you're seeing problems there, that's what's going on. We're working on trying to address those. 
Our brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacraments of baptism, we are incorporated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. So I present to you this morning Amari Martinez and her family who will be coming forward for baptism. And Amari's mother, Ashley, is one of the teachers in our preschool. And so not a member of our worshiping community yet, um, but a member of our community. And so to help support her this morning along with her family, I'm going to invite anybody who's affiliated with the ARC, uh, parents, teachers, board members, former teachers, if you'll come forward and you'll stand on this side also representing her family uh, here in this congregation. And so, Ashley, I'm going to ask you to stand right here, turn towards me. Hi, sweetie. So, Ashley, I ask you on behalf of the church and your daughter, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And for the members of this community, will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church? that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If you will, say, I will. And to you as the body of Christ, the church affirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. If you do, say, we do. And will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Quite a few more frames, James. Two more. Nope, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Looks like you're going backwards. Keep going. Keep going. All right, there we are. So you'll see in your response. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news, a living according to the example of Christ. And continuing. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who will walk in the way that leads to life. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these waters, O, o God, to bless them and those who receive them, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And the people respond, all praise to you, eternal Father, to your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right, I'm all right, I'm going to take you. Are you ready for this? There's going to be a little bit of water, and it's a little cold. So, Amari, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You did a great job. All right, so I'm going to invite everybody to come forward and lay hands on Amari. So just reach out your hand and put them on her. Namari, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. And all that God's children say, Amen. Amen. All right. And let us welcome the newest member of the church, Universal, Amari Martinez. Can you say hi? Can give you back to mom? Thank you. And one thing that... Um, Many Protestant churches don't do is a baptismal candle, so Amari has one uh, here. So we're going to light this from our Christ candle. And then the family will take this home. Whoops. Let's make the Holy, sure the Holy Spirit's really working here. There we go. 
And then on the anniversary of her baptism, it gets relit, and Amari remembers that she is a baptized child of God and a baptized member of the church. So you may return to your seats. Thank you. And before we go to God in prayer, just a, um, two more to lift up for you. Uh, first, as we received this word this morning, that Gail Little's sister Barbara, who we've been praying for uh, for a while, passed away this morning. So prayers for her family. And the youth group had a lock-in uh, last night to welcome new members and to celebrate the seniors who are leaving. So um, they're celebrating the seniors uh, this morning who will be going off to school in a few weeks and also uh, celebrating that um, Abigail has been elected as a new leader of the youth group. So keep those in your prayers as well. So let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we celebrate Amari's baptism here this morning. And we remember and celebrate our own baptisms of being washed in that water, of rising up into Christ, being created new in your glory. And so we ask you to help us to remember for always and always that we are your beloved sons and daughters, that we are baptized children, that we are members of your church universal, not just of this congregation or the congregation we grew up in, but of the church universal all around the world, gathering with Christians everywhere this day, and celebrating all those baptisms that take place this day and every day, those new creations in Christ. And we thank you for washing us clean in the grace and mercy that is poured out for you, poured out for us without cost. There's nothing we can do to earn your grace. It is freely given to us, and it's given to everyone. Everyone and all of creation are welcomed into your kingdom. And so guide us and lead us as baptized members of your church, not just to proclaim the good news, but to be the good news, that we too will live in grace and mercy and forgiveness. We will live in your peace and your harmony and your wholeness, that we will be your witnesses to the power of baptism. We pray these things through your Holy Spirit in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us so that we too might rise with him. And all God's children say, Amen. Would you please stand and let's sing our praises to God now. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead, three and one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. How great is our
the spirit moves and works in us when we turn our lives to over to christ and when we cry out to god it is the movement of the spirit working in us hear what the spirit is saying to the church if god is for us who is against us he who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us will he not with him also give us everything else who will bring any charge against god's elect it is god who justifies who is it to condemn it is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Gospel reading is from Luke. Jesus is making his way for his triumphant entry into Jerusalem for his last week. He has told the crowd several parables about discipleship and right living with God and makes his final prediction of his coming death and resurrection. Just before entering Jericho, he heals a blind man, and in gaining his sight, the man immediately begins to follow Jesus. Jesus has entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man who was there named Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, 
Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to the house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. So if you've not already been using your scripture insert, I invite you to take that out. On the back is a place to write things to remember from today's service. And for those in the sanctuary, you need this immediately after the message this morning as well. When people are asked to name the best movie villains of all time, Darth Vader routinely makes that list. In fact, for quite a few years, he was number one on that list. He has now dropped down to number three. Uh, behind Hannibal Lecter of Silence of the Lambs and Norman Bates of Psycho, number one and two. Because we've seen, that they're somewhat different, though, between those two and Vader, because as we've seen, Vader does not seem to be mentally unstable like those first two. I'm not arguing that he is a hero. He is not, for example, like Atticus Finch of To Kill a Mockingbird, who's number one on the list of the best heroes of the movies. He seems more like Nurse Ratched of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, or Mr. Potter from It's, it's a Wonderful Life, number five and six on the list of the best villains. Because rather than seeming, seeming to have a mental illness, they just seem mean and nasty and they enjoy doing that. Although perhaps that's even worse, although I should note that people who have mental illness, although the same tends to come up when there's mass shootings or something, people who have mental illness are much more likely to be victims of violence and bad things happening than actual perpetrators of violence. But at least with those, right, with Norman Bates or Hannibal Lecter, we we might have some reasoning for their behavior. We can say, well, clearly they're dealing with some mental disturbances there. But we, we don't really have that with Vader, except that we've seen, as we've made our way through these films, some of the reasoning why he became who he is. And yet we're probably right to ask whether, as is our metaphor here, Darth Vader's behavior moves him beyond the grace of God. Does forgiveness apply to Darth Vader and others like him? Or has he moved beyond what we can forgive? Has he moved beyond what God can forgive? Is redemption possible? And so that's the topic we return to as we come to the conclusion of the original Star Wars trilogy, moving on to Return of the Jedi, which happens to be my personal favorite of the Star Wars films. It was released in 1983, so 40 years ago this summer, which is the reason why we're doing this movie series now. And originally it was titled Revenge of the Jedi, but does anyone know why they removed the revenge and made it return? Yes, Linda. Right, revenge is not a Jedi, don't seek revenge. Again, think of episode three, Revenge of the Sith, that we looked at last week. But as return begins, the Empire is seeking to rebuild the Death Star, which had been destroyed in the end of the original Star Wars. Han Solo is encased in carbonite and is hanging in the palace of Jabba the Hutt, who's sort of a godfather-like head of a crime syndicate. Leia, Luke, and Chewbacca go to rescue him, and in that process, Leia kills Jabba before most of them fly off to the the moon of Endor, where they encounter teddy bear-like group of individuals known as Ewoks, and you can look at the back. Christine has her Ewok outfit on this morning, so for those in worship, as you're leaving, you'll see that. Um, And the Ewoks help battle the Empire. Meanwhile, Luke goes back to receive more training from Yoda, who dies while he is there, but not before Yoda tells him that Leia is actually his sister, and also says that to truly become a Jedi, he must once again face Darth Vader. Luke eventually joins them all on Endor, voluntarily surrenders himself to uh, Vader, who takes him to the Emperor, and Vader and Luke engage in another lightsaber duel 
But Luke puts away his weapon. He actually throws away his weapon and says he will not kill his father because he is a Jedi, just like his father before him. So the emperor then seeks to kill Luke, but that jumps us to the end too far ahead. But in that gospel passage we heard from this morning, as Jesus enters into Jericho, a crowd gathers around, and so Zacchaeus, who is a wee little man, and a wee little man was he, for those who remember their Sunday school songs, runs ahead and climbs up a sycamore tree in order to try and see him. This is quite an unseemly thing to do for men in this time period, not just running, but climbing up a tree. But when Jesus sees Zacchaeus in the tree, he calls him down and says, I'm going to stay at your house today. And everybody begins to grumble about what's about to happen. And they do so because that key piece of information we're told right at the beginning. Not that he's short, but that he is a chief tax collector and he's rich, which means he's really good at collecting taxes. Now, I'm sure that some of you don't like paying taxes, but if you met someone who worked for the IRS or for the New Mexico Department of Taxation and Revenue, I bet you that you wouldn't immediately hate them or try to kill them, which was actually prominent behavior in first century Palestine, especially if the tax collector was Jewish. Because Jewish tax collectors were seen as collaborators with the Romans, therefore traitors to their people. Because the way taxes worked in the ancient world is it wasn't that the Roman Senate set, you know, this is going to be the sales tax or this is the employment tax, right? And you went to the, the store and they withheld it and did all those things as we're sort of used to it now. What Rome did is they put out bids. And whoever said they would collect the most amount of money to send to Rome, guess what? Won the bid. And then they had to collect that or face the wrath of Rome. But the only way they could make money was to collect above and beyond what they had promised to Rome. Which means that basically they had to lie, cheat, and steal, do whatever is necessary to make any money. And so Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector and he's rich. Which means he lies and cheats and steals with the best of them. Right? Think of the best con artist and Zacchaeus is in that. And the fact that everyone grumbles about what Jesus says to Zacchaeus sort of says that, that how much everyone dislikes him. And I'm not going to draw a, an equation that Zacchaeus and Darth Vader are exactly the same, but I bet you they're probably disliked and feared just as much as each other. And so Jesus, seeking not just to go to Zacchaeus' house, but saying, salvation has come to this house is shocking for everyone involved. And even though Zacchaeus says he's going to give up half of what he has and send it to the poor, and he says, I'm going to give, if I've defrauded anybody, I'm going to give four times that amount back to them. Except everyone who's there knows that's not even possible. He doesn't have enough money, because how is he getting his money? By defrauding people. He's not wealthy enough to do what he said, said that he's going to do. And the story doesn't tell us this, but I sort of always imagine in hearing Zacchaeus say this, that he is not just trying to appease the crowd here, but he's also trying to appease Jesus. To make himself worthy of having Jesus as a guest. And so Jesus' response to salvation has come to Zacchaeus' house here, is not in response to Zacchaeus saying he's going to give away all of his wealth, it's because of who he is. Because Jesus says, salvation's come to this house because he is a son of Abraham. That is, he's an heir to the promise of God. And he was once lost, but is now found. The Zacchaeus' salvation is given freely by God. Not dependent upon his actions, because if it was dependent upon what he did, as Paul says, and we would brag about it, right? We talk about how great we were and we got God's grace because we did all these great things. God's grace comes to Zacchaeus because of who he is, not because of what he has done. That he is a, a son of 
Abraham, an heir of the promise. But to receive that, Zacchaeus does have to recognize that he's been on the wrong path, doing the wrong things, and take the steps to move back to that path of righteousness. Because, again, the story doesn't say this, but I think it's sort of implied that if Zacchaeus had kept doing the same things, acting as a chief collect, tax collector and lying and cheating and stealing from everyone, that if he hadn't agreed to change his practices, that Jesus would not have made the proclamation of salvation he, that he did. Not because salvation was not ready and available to Zacchaeus, but because Zacchaeus wasn't ready to receive it. If you don't understand your need for grace, then grace means nothing to you. Zacchaeus had to understand who he was, a child of God, and he was going down the wrong path. He had to understand that God's grace was going to raise him up into that fellowship in order to receive that grace. And so we see a similar thing happen with Darth Vader. After Luke surrenders to Vader, he tells Vader, his father, that he still senses that there's good in him. And Vader says, it's too late for me. That's not a denial of goodness. Just that he thinks that there's this timeline for grace. That past a certain point, if you've done too much, like maybe blow up a planet, God's grace is no longer available to you. That you're fully and truly lost. But that's not how God's grace or forgiveness or love works. That no matter how long you've been on this particular path, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what you've done in your life, God's grace is still there for us, extended out to us. Additionally, what God says is we are always more than the worst thing or the worst things that we have ever done in our lives. That we are children of God, and that's enough. Jesus says you'll be forgiven of all your sin. No matter what you've done, you'll be forgiven of that if you ask for forgiveness. And Paul says in that passage from Romans, we heard that there's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from God's love. Do you believe that? I mean, truly believe that there is nothing that can separate you from God's love? And not just believe it, but act and live in that reality. Not so that we can then go off and do whatever it is that we want, because then we say, well, I can go off and sin, right, and just ask for forgiveness, and I'm all good, and then go off and sin again. That's not the way this is working. But truly say, I need your grace, God, in order to try to live the right way. Do we believe that redemption is present for everyone, including us? So at the conclusion of return, again, after Luke surrenders to Vader, Vader takes him up to see the emperor who tries to then, again, get him to convert to the dark side. And Luke and Vader again engage in a lightsaber battle. So, a lightsaber battle, so if you'll play that video. And I should have told you it was edited. There's like a 30-minute scene there because there's battles that are taking place there. A little, one, one more geek piece of information. David Prose, who plays Darth Vader, the, the man, not the voice, right? That's James Earl Jones, actually thought he was finally going to get his face on screen. But allegedly, nobody's confirmed this, um, George Lucas was upset because he told uh, before um, – Empire Strikes Back came out that he told a reporter he thought that Vader was Luke's father and that upset Lucas for that reveal uh, and so cut him out so that his face wasn't there. That's not the man who played um, Darth Vader as, as the character. But it's one thing to talk about Vader's redemption of his telling Luke that he was right. 
and his turning away from the dark side, which is what his removal of the mask represents, because if those who saw Revenge of the Sith, right, almost the last scene as it becomes Darth Vader, the last thing that comes on is his mask. You see it through first person there. So for Anakin to return, to Vader to go away, is this sense of redemption. But do we really want to forgive Vader? What about all those people he force choked? Do they want us to forgive Vader? What about all the people who lived on the planet Alderaan? Do they want to forgive Vader? Is there really nothing in all of creation that can separate us from God's love? Because it's pretty easy sometimes to claim that for ourselves. But it's much harder when we want to talk about other people, especially those who we might say are evil or who have done evil things. I mean, do we want to forgive Putin or Hitler or Pol Pot or that serial killer they just arrested in, in New York? Do we want to say that God's grace and redemption are available to them? Does God's love, can God's love possibly extend to those people? Can they ever truly be redeemed? Don't we want to at least say that there are some bridges that are too far? Right? If you do that, then you're cut off. And yet Paul says nothing in all of creation can separate us from God's love. And if we're willing to accept that for ourselves, then we have to accept that for others. If we want to take the good news for ourselves, that also has to be good news for others. But how do we, how do we deal with that? And here's what I, my answer is, I leave it to God. Because just like last week when we were looking at Revenge of the Sith and we talked about hate and, and fear, and I quoted Dr. King who said that gr hate is too great a burden to bear, so he's going to live in love. And I think this is the same way. Judgment is too great a burden to bear. So I'm going to leave that to God and I'm going to live in love and grace and forgiveness. Now, that does not mean that we can't name evil when it happens. It does not mean that we cannot call out social injustices and work to try and solve those problems, right? We're called to do those things. But it's also to remember that the good news for us is the good news for others. Just as we baptized Amari this morning and remembered our own baptisms, that we were washed clean, so too does this water wash everyone clean. And we have to remember that while it might seem like evil and hate will win, that love is more powerful and that love always wins. And I would much rather settle on a love that I don't understand and can't explain than to live in a hate and judgment that I do understand all too well. I'd rather live in a love that I can't understand and explain than to live in judgments and hates. Because Jesus says the angels rejoice when one sheep that was lost has been returned back to the fold. Because the Son of Man came out to seek and to save the lost. Now, when the original Star Wars began in 1977, it was completed with the return of the Jedi uh, in 83. We thought it was telling us this story about the path of Luke Skywalker, this hero's journey. But it turns out it wasn't about Luke Skywalker at all. It was about his father. It was about the rise and fall and then redemption of Anakin Skywalker. And the good news for us, the good news for the, the world, the good news for the lost and the founds, 
is that God did not withhold even God's own son to bring redemption to the world because there's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from God's love. And that when we seek forgiveness, forgiveness is given to us. Given to me, to you, to everyone, even, I think, to Darth Vader. And that redemption and salvation are possible. And in that, we should give thanks. I pray that it will be so, my brothers and sisters. Amen. And for those in the sanctuary, again, I'm going to invite you to take out your worship guide. If you've not been using that, for those who are worshiping with us online, to get out a piece of paper. And I want you to, uh, we're going to spend a minute to write about, maybe you don't think that God actually loves you. And what do we need to do, or where do you need help to, to know that answer? Maybe there's somebody you're struggling with still about forgiveness or somebody you think is beyond God's grace, or maybe it's somebody who needs God's grace, and we need to be praying for them. And so we're going to take a minute, and I want you to write what it is that you're going to reflect on uh, and work on in this next week. So if you'll start that timer. Oh God, we thank you for your grace poured out freely for us and for all of creation. And we just ask you to help us to live in that grace, to know indeed that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. And so for those who are amongst us here this morning, we know that maybe some of us are struggling to hear that message. Or we've been struggling thinking that God could never truly love me because of what I'd done. And that maybe this morning for that first time, your word is seeking in, and so if that's where you are this morning and would like to make that commitment, I'm going to invite you to do so in this moment of silence here, just to ask God to, to be present and help you to walk that path or how you're going to seek out that assistance. Maybe we're making that statement for the first time. Maybe we're making it for the hundredth time because we keep falling off that path, but we know that you are there ready to pick us back up and to forgive us that your grace and your mercy, your waters cleanse us each and every day. And we know that every day is a choice. And so we'd like to say that this day we're going to choose to follow you and to live more and more like Christ in what we do, remembering our baptism and most importantly, remembering and knowing your love in our lives. And we pray these things, saying the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So in the, those in the sanctuary, in your worship guide, you'll find two lists of uh, announcements, things that are happening around the church. Lots coming up. Next Sunday is August 6th, last Sunday before school begins. So we will be doing our annual blessing of the backpack. So students, teachers, administrators, coaches, volunteers, whoever you are, bring something next Sunday to uh, be blessed for us. That will also be doing our safe sanctuary training um, after worship next Sunday from 1130 to 130. Um, 
and that's for really everybody, those, particularly those who are involved in children and youth programming, but it's really Safe Sanctuary is about keeping all of us safe, so everybody's invited to that, and lunch is also included. And then immediately after worship today, um, we will be doing training uh, on our slides is where we're going to start today. So if you are mildly interested in what it looks like to run the slides either in-house or on our stream, um, please stay after worship for that training. And then we are blessed this morning, again, once again, um, have um, Catherine and Isabel Adams, who are founders of Paper for Water with us. Before they come forward, though, we're going to pr play a short video, which is a couple years old, so some of this information is out of date, because um, we had some huge improvements on water stuff. So you'll start that video. <laughs> If you want to do something in your community, it doesn't have to start out as this like huge, massive project with really big vision or anything. You just have to start with an idea, something that you love, or some problem that you really want to change. So Paper for Water is a nonprofit organization my sister and I started seven years ago, and we raise money to fund water projects around the world by making and selling origami decorations. I'm Katherine Adams, I'm 13, and I live in Dallas, Texas. And my name is Isabel Adams, I'm 15, and I also live in Dallas, Texas. And we learned how to fold origami. And we also learned that a child died every 15 seconds from unclean water. We wanted to do something about it. So we took something that we loved, which was origami, and we started taking donations for them. And by the end of the year, we had raised over $10,000. And we funded a whole well in Ethiopia. We are here in Ethiopia, and this is where our first well was put in. So the well we're at currently, it services the school, community, and the health center. We have a bunch of volunteers, and usually on an ornament, either one person will do it or they'll have a group of people. There's no possible way we could do paper for water without them. There's just not enough hours in the day. We wouldn't be able to fold as many ornaments. We wouldn't be able to reach as many people. It's just impossible to do anything without them. In 2013, we became an official nonprofit, and since then, we funded over 170 water projects and raised over $1.5 million. Our end goal is to solve the world water crisis, and while it's a huge goal, it's definitely doable. So we've been partnering with uh, Paper for Water for several years now, so I'm going to invite Catherine and Isabel to come forward as well uh, and you're all invited on Tuesday this coming Tuesday um, they're doing an origami workshop at Ghost Ranch so not too far north of us the event is ten dollars and lunch is fourteen dollars there'll be some people from the congregation going so uh, if you'd like to uh, attend that you can sign up at the back of the worship uh, sanctuary or speak with Philip and he's making me a driving motion uh, carpooling is available so but Catherine and Isabel Thank you so much for having us here. We're always, we always love to come and worship with you in the summer. Um, thank you so much for supporting us. We really appreciate it. Um, Catherine, do you want to tell us about the project we've been working on? I was just going to say the video is very out of date. We are actually coming up on our 12th anniversary. Um, we've been able to raise over $3.5 million and help to fund over 350 water projects. So we want to thank you for everything that you have done to help improve all of those numbers and for everyone who has come to some of our annual events. Um, that has been really special for us. So as was mentioned, we're doing a workshop at Ghost Ranch. Um, I hope that all of you who want to learn more about paper for water or learn how to fold origami or refresh your origami skills from last year, uh, we would love to have you all out there. We're also going to do a little tour of the ranch and um, if you want to learn about the history of the ranch as well, that'll be super fun. Um, so I hope you all can join us. We look forward to, to seeing you all again there. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm hoping you'll be available after worship too if people have questions and want to talk with you. And we do have some um, ornaments still from last year available. There, you'll see them outside the office in the hallway there. Uh, if you would like to purchase more ornaments to help support that uh, beyond what we already do through mission. So thank you for all the work that you guys do. It's truly amazing. <clears throat> and I know we are beyond time, so I'm asking your indulgence. Uh, so Paper for Water is just one of the, the ministries we are partnering with to make 
uh, a difference in the world. So one of our membership vows is that we will support this congregation through the giving, uh, church, uh, through our fi financial giving, uh, which we explain is giving a portion, uh, a percentage of our income with a tithe or 10% of the goal. There's several ways you can give for those in the sanctuary. As we're singing our closing song, you can come forward and place your offering into the offering place. If you've given electronically, you'll find a green card in the pew pocket. You can place that into the plate representing your gift. If you'd like to give electronically, you can go to our website, firstinyourheart.org. You can also give through the Church Center app. Uh, click on Secure Giving. You can also text, sorry, uh, else. You can also text the dollar amount you like to give to 84321 uh, and follow the steps in those or simply mail in your checks. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for making a difference. We are indeed God's love in action. And so I invite you to stand as you are comfortable remain seated. If that's more comfortable for our closing song, as remember that we find our strength and our joy in our relationship with God. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes. my way you are the shield around me always you remain my courage in the fight i hear you call my name jesus i am coming walking on the waves reaching for your life the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
It's another one of our expectations that we'll re be reading the Bible daily. So in your scripture inserts on the inside, you'll find recommended scripture readings for each day of the week, a prayer for the week to help you do your daily prayer, and scripture readings, questions to help prepare for next Sunday as we conclude our series looking at the movie uh, Rogue One. We'll be showing that at 6 p.m. this Wednesday at Sala. Uh, back at Sala again. Um, and just a, a warning for those who have not seen that, that's, even though it's called Star Wars, this is the most warlike of the films. Uh, so 6 p.m. Uh, this week at Sala. Um, and also for those who have tickets to Oppenheimer, that is at 2.30. Movie starts at 2.30. Uh, and Philip will get you into the theater um, with the tickets there. So we'll see you at Sala this afternoon uh, for those who have tickets to that. Hear these words from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who might live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and raised, was raised for them. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. For, so as a forgiven and reconciled people, go forth to forgive and be the light of Christ. And may the love of the Father, the strength of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Now go be the church. Sorrow comes my way, you are the shield around me. Always you remain like courage in the fight. I hear you call my name, Jesus. I am coming, walking on the waves, preaching for your life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my Praise God. Thank yep, you. praise Thank God. You. Amen. No, it works great when we have 150 people here. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that good? You could actually hear them.
if we can't have any fun then